Let's talk about statistical tables. One of the most important things to understand about tables is when to make a table. The table is used for looking up details and summarizing overall results when the results are fairly simple. Uh, tables are really not good for seeing trends. Uh, for that, you really need graphics. Tables are good when you have very simple stratification. So if you're stratifying by male or female or treatment A or treatment B, those are truly categorical variables. Um, tables are decidedly not appropriate when you're summarizing how a variable changes across levels of a continuous independent variable such as age. For that, you really need a graph. Since tables are for lookup purposes, uh, they can be very complex and can contain lots of details. Now, um, the media that you're ultimately publishing in really has a lot to do with how you should format results. With the printed media, we're stuck with static images. Um, and so we tend to separate tables and graphs into two distinct entities. But with modern media, such as interactive media, HTML5 and so on, it's really better to think about a table as a pop-up when you're viewing an element of a graph. So let's say you're at a certain portion of a line plot or seeing a curve plotted and you hover the mouse over that part, uh, you can see details pop up such as predicted values and confidence intervals. Uh, that was shown in, uh, in a previous section in this chapter. You have to decide uh, how to display different types of response variables. Uh, they have vastly different displays. So for binary variables, uh, you're really talking about proportions or percentages. I think proportions are uh, better than percentages because they're simpler. You don't need to multiply by 100. Um, but whether you use proportions or uh, percentages, they are both have the advantage that they're normalized for the sample size. Uh, you don't need to show both proportions if there's two groups. You don't need to show the proportions of subjects who are male and the proportion who are female because they add up to a proportion of one. But just choose one of those if there's two groups. Now, why do I think proportions are better than percents? Well, I have a whole blog article devoted to that on fherald.com. But I think um, Percentages actually create confusion because uh, many researchers are confused about absolute percent change versus relative percent change. And even when talking about a single proportion, a percentage such as 0.3% is often mistaken for 30% or 3%. And so when you have proportions all the time, we don't really have that confusion. Now, um, a really, really important point is to make logical choices for what are your independent and dependent variables. So when you're summarizing a variable, uh, you're thinking of that typically as a dependent variable. And you really want to stratify by independent variables and show summaries of dependent variables. Unfortunately, many tables in the published literature do not respect uh, the assignment of independent and dependent variables. So we see tables where they might show um, of those patients who live, what proportion were males, and of those who died, what proportion are males. So that's really not helpful. It's not the prospective way to look at data. And we need to show of the males, what proportion died, of the females, what proportion died. So get the order correctly. Um, order correct. And then when you move to continuous response variables, um, we like things like quantiles because they're always descriptive if you have a truly continuous variable without a lot of ties in it. Uh, and so we typically show the three quartiles. So the 25th, 50th, 75th percentile. And there are two recommended formats for showing these three number summaries. Uh, both of them are featuring the sample median because it is a measure of central tendency. So in this case, the median is 50, the 25th percentile is 35, the 75th percentile is 67. I like the first format that really lets the median stand out with the standard size font and bold, and the 25th and 75th percentiles are in smaller font. 
if you want to keep everything the same font size, you can use this slash notation and uh, boldface the median. Now, in terms of uh, raw data summaries of continuous variables, percentiles, quantiles are very good. Uh, we often have tables of summary statistics, um, such as uh, means, medians, differences in medians, differences in means, and have confidence intervals. And just as a side comment, when you're making confidence intervals, it's a good idea not to assume normality. So you might use a Bayesian credible interval instead of a confidence interval and not assume normality, or you might use in the frequentist world, you might use bootstrap non-parametric confidence intervals to, to get the right asymmetric confidence intervals that do not assume normality. Um, now, what about having a continuous baseline variable? Well, you don't want to use a table to show how a continuous baseline variable relates to some outcome, because that would require arbitrary binning and loss of information through categorization. And that actually creates a distortion and a misunderstanding. Uh, we want to use graphs to show smooth relationships. Also want to show the number of missing values and show denominators. Uh, another uh, side comment is a very common mistake in comparative studies, such as randomized trials, but other comparative studies, is the wrong confidence intervals are shown in the table or a graph. So if you're randomizing patients to treatment A or treatment B, uh, a randomized study does not take a random sample of the population of patients on treatment A. It doesn't take a random sample of any type. So there's no real population inference for the mean outcome for those on treatment A. A randomized trial is only designed to provide valid estimates of differences between treatments. So the only confidence interval you should show in a randomized trial would be the confidence interval for the difference across treatments. And that applies to some observational studies also. Now, what are we talking about in terms of formatting tables? Well, this simple example in table 4.1 is just um, showing uh, a non-stratified table. So there's no treatment groups or other groups going horizontally, but we do see summaries for both continuous and categorical variables. So N is the number of non-missing observations for each variable. And then for age, we have the three quartiles with the median is larger and bold face. For the third variable, we see that there was a one missing data point. And now for gender, or what would be more accurately called sex here, um, we don't need to show the proportion of males being 0.48. We can just show the proportion of females being 0.52. And you can see the numerator and denominator uh, so you know exactly how that proportion was calculated. For a three-level variable, we're showing the proportions for all three because the reference one that you might leave out would be a little too arbitrary. So you, you see there are three proportions that add up to one, and you see the corresponding numerators and denominators. Now the length is given here, uh, which we will turn to now is a more complex table that has stratification. So going across, we have the um, two randomized treatment groups, D penicillamine and placebo with their overall sample sizes, uh, not the sample size for each variable that might vary because of missing values. And then we have a third column, which is patients who were registered, but who were not randomized. And so you see this mixture of continuous and categorical variables, and we have the full labels for variables and the units of measurement for continuous variables, the, the overall number of non-missing observations. Um, and then we have the three number summary, which we did not bold or, or make a larger font for medians as we should have here. Uh, so you see the three quartiles. Um, at the top of the column there for serum bilirubin. And then underneath that is the mean plus or minus standard deviation, which is not always recommended, especially the standard deviation 
Um, and depending on your way that you view this, this is a table produced in HTML. So it would be very easy to uh, insert that directly into a Word document and preserve all the formatting. Um, if you used a wider screen and viewed this HTML table, the mean and standard deviation might come out to the right of the three quartiles. So that's automatically reformatted as you as you shrink your, your window uh, narrower or make it wider. Uh, you can look down uh, the table and you see summaries for categorical variables. And when you get to the sex variable, there's just the proportion uh, that are female in each of the three patient groups. But for categorical variables like histologic stage, we're showing the proportions for all four levels there. So this is just one of many sorts of formats you could have. Um, even though this is a high information table, I don't think it compares that favorably to showing a graphic that has um, a full resolution histogram, spike histogram for each continuous variable stratified by treatment. And then it has a dot chart for the categorical variables. That's something that we showed uh, several examples of in the, in the previous graphics section. 